friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And before we get to talking about the knife, I want to give you an update on the Great Cycle Challenge. Thank you to the few people who have sponsored me. Uh, some of you guys have sponsored me for fairly large amounts. What I am looking for is a whole bunch more people who want to sponsor me for small amounts. Perhaps you logged in and looked at the list and you saw people giving, you know, $70, $70 whatever it was. And you felt like, hey, I can't afford that. And you clicked away and did something else. I want you to reconsider sponsoring me for, you know, maybe $2.50. Because on Wednesday, uh, when this video is going live, for Wednesday, August the 11th, there's a matching program going on. Every donation you give on Wednesday will get matched. So if you give $2.50, it becomes 5 bucks, And... If five bucks, you know, was done by a hundred people, I'd meet my goal, but I've more than met half of my goal. So I just need 40, 50 people to give a small donation each, and we'll get to that goal of raising $500 for cancer research for childhood cancers. An update on my friend's son, uh, he's doing very bad. <laughs> he's, he's, he's very poorly off. If you didn't see my other videos, he's got a brain cancer, 15-year-old boy named Caleb in Canada. It's cancer is the number one killer of children under 18 years of age. It's the number one killer in Canada. So uh, if you can help out even just a little bit, it would really help a lot. Links down below. I know a lot of people who watch this channel are fairly tight on their budgets, and you don't have much money at all. So I understand that. I'm not asking everybody to give, but I know there's some people watching who could give up a coffee worth of money once. And that's all it would take for a whole bunch to add up. It would add up quick. Today we're taking a look at the Rustic Gent by Civivi. The Rustic Gent is a buoy shaped blade D2 steel, or you can get pattern welded, commonly known as Damascus. We've got uh, micarta, sorry, <laughs> micarta. You can also get it with G10 and carbon fiber up front on the bolster. It's a sub three inch blade, just barely, just the way I like my sub three inch blades to be. And it comes with a leather sheath, a sleeve, I should say. So, if you're interested at all in this knife, keep watching. We're gonna take a commercial break and then we'll get into it. See you soon. Okay, so here it is. The first thing we'll take a close look at is the sheath. We've got leather. It's genuine leather. It's not very heavy. It's a nice light leather stitched all the way around and then back stitched. And we've got a metal clip in here. The clip comes right here. Here's where it's riveted on. And on the inside, you can't feel anything. So to this piece of leather, and then sew this piece of leather on. So we've got a clip that holds on to your pocket. And the knife goes in here. It goes all the way to the bottom nicely with a little bit of a lanyard. Let's see how it goes into a pocket. The way I was carrying it is like this. So there's that there, and then the lanyard was actually usually tucked in beside so that all you saw was that, and then I'd reach in, grab the lanyard, pull the knife out, and use it. And when I was done, I'd uh, put the knife back, oops, I was off screen, put the knife back into the sleeve. And it wasn't always easy to get it back into the sleeve just right when I was wearing it. I don't know, maybe it's because of my extra pounds. I don't know. I One thing, the main con for this entire knife and system is this pocket clip. I wish there was a system that held tighter onto the pocket so that the sleeve didn't come along sometimes. Sometimes the sleeve, you know, was starting to come out of the pocket with me. And... I didn't like that that awful much. Other than that, I really like it. It's a nice soft leather and you know it worked fairly well most of the time. 
We've got Sabibi's name, you know, embossed on the front. Not bad. The knife itself comes with my second con, and that is it comes with this lanyard, and it's a very cheap lanyard. It's it's too cheap for this knife, in my opinion. Yeah, it's a lanyard. It's good to have a lanyard to pull this out. I, it was only knotted up at the end here. I added these extra knots to shorten the, lead, the lanyard down a little bit and to give it extra grip to grab to uh, pull it out. Um, I could probably actually add one more. Well, I'm not going to do it on screen now. Add one more knot in there to make it even shorter. So I'm not fond of this. So the first thing that I'm going to do on this video right now is I'm going to cut this off. So you've seen how the lanyard looks, how it comes. Uh, if somebody, maybe I shouldn't cut it off just in case I don't keep this but give it away and that person might want the cheap lanyard. I don't know these things on what people want and what they don't want. So I'll take it off and untie it. There you go. I took it off because I wanted to show you the nice lanyard hole they have there. It's beautiful. It's easy to put paracord in that hole and up out the other side because it's nice and smooth all the way around. I like that it's inset. It comes out the back. It doesn't bulk out. That's the perfect lanyard system for people who like lanyards. And on the odd knife, like this kind of knife, I'd like to have just a short little lanyard with a bead on it. Just something really short just for that pulling out ease. The handle materials... We've got carbon fiber bolsters. Then you can get micarta in a couple of colors or G10 that's black. This one's micarta and I think it looks quite nice. The uh, We've got body screws here. T8 screws like Civivi usually does. Quite nice. The back of the knife, this lockback system, everything's nicely rounded. There's no sharp edges anywhere. Uh, it's easy to depress the lock back release, you know, so when the knife is locked, it's easy to unlock it to close the knife. So that's good. We've got a half stop right there. Um, my card is exposed all the way around. It's just nice. The belly of the knife here, it's slightly rounded on those edges there. And then the steel aligners on the inside, they are rounded over as well. So very comfortable in the hand to you know, grip this thing if you have to grip it tight to cut with. It just works really well. Reverse grip, all these other grips, quite nice. My hands are into the extra large size and you can see I can get a full grip on this knife. So this knife will be good for most hand sizes, just not those that are deep or well into the extra large uh, range of hand sizes. The blade shape, we've got a nice buoy style clip point here. We've got fullers on both sides that act as the nail necks. And then we've got a hollow grind. So we've got a fine tip. It's nice and thin up here. And then it comes thin behind the grind. Great for slicing, whittling, cutting, you know, sitting around the campfire, you know, chewing up a piece of wood with your knife. It's great for that. And, you know, package opening EDC stuff, it works like a charm. It's a very nice knife. Just on the very edge of the Ricasa right there, it says D2. And that's all the writing on this thing. Other than the C on the uh, pin here and Civivi on the leather. So I like how Civivi doesn't overbrand. It's just beautiful. The action's nice and smooth. If I unlock the knife and I give it a shake, you know, it falls down. It doesn't take an awful lot of pressure, so it's a very smooth action. I'm sure that there are, well, you can just barely see them, the phosphor bronze right in there. Nice phosphor bronze washers in there. Perfect. There's no blade play side to side, up and down. Lockup is great, and the action's very light and smooth. So beautiful mechanics on this knife. Did I say it slices well? It does. It's really good. And that tip for doing delicate work, precision stuff, 
it works like a charm. And here's some still pictures of the knife taken apart. I'm going to be talking about the measurements. The sticker will be on the screen while I do that. The weight of this knife, 96 grams. That's 2.7 ounces. You add in the sheath and it's a mere 97 grams, which is 3.4 ounces. So not heavy in any way. The sharpness from the factory, 110 best. Better than average from the knives. I've been reviewing the last 250 plus knives. The length of the cutting edge, 74.2 millimeters, 2.92 inches. Blade length handle to the very tip, 75.1 millimeters, 2.96 inches. The thickness of the blade is 2.41 millimeters, which is 0 0.095, so just under a tenth of an inch. The blade depth, it's biggest right here by the clip, 20.1 millimeters, 0.79 of an inch. How thick is it behind the grind? Well, it is 0.32 millimeters, which is 0 0.0125 inches. And you can sharpen this knife a lot of times before it starts getting anything significant in terms of thicker behind the grind. The hollow comes down and it's just a beautiful hollow grind. The grind angles uh, on this side 17.1 degrees, on this side 21.4 degrees. There is less than two degrees variability along the length. Mostly it's here at the heel of the blade where it gets steeper. So when they were sharpening, I guess they got nervous near the heel of the blade and tipped it up too much. The handle length, 98.2 millimeters, 3.87 inches. The grip area, it's right around nine centimeters or three and a half inches, so plenty of real estate. The thickness of the handle, 11.4 millimeters, 0.449 of an inch. The handle depth, it's biggest right back here, and that is 21.1 millimeters, 0.83 of an inch. When the knife is closed, the widest point is here by the tip of the clip point, 29.6 millimeters, 1.17 inches. The total length of this knife is 173.6 millimeters, which is six and 13 sixteenths of an inch. A tiny bit over that. So not bad at all. How much does this knife cost? This knife is selling for $76.50 at White Mountain Knives. That's the lowest priced version. The Damascus ones are going to cost more. Uh, take off 10% with coupon code CCE and you're paying $68.85 American. Canadians, this knife will have no problem at all crossing the border into Canada as a lockback knife is not restricted in any way. The equivalent is about $86.60 Canadian. So even if you have to pay duty and taxes and fees on the taxes, it's still less from White Mountain Knives. Can he, the European price, Lamnia has it for $87.33. That's with VAT. But of course, there's plus a little bit of shipping for them. And of course, White Mountain Knives charges a tiny bit of shipping to go to Canada too. So what do I think of this knife? It's got the, you know, back lock. It's a strong lock, very solid, very good. It's got a beautiful design to it. It's, it is what its name says. It's a rustic gent. It's like a old school gentleman's folder. And it really is that, quite nice. Uh, Higher-end materials than you commonly see at a price range that's only a tiny bit outside of what I usually review. It's comfortable in the hand. It's very light. Look at that alignment. It's right down the middle where it should be. It's so easy to open it up. You don't need to use the nail nick with your nails. It doesn't have that much pressure. It just wants to come open and just well made, nice little sharpness trail. Under, understated in terms of the branding. Grippy micarta, 
very nice lock back. Basically, the cons that I had were this comes out of the pocket a little bit too easily because of this, but you can just use it as a pocket sleeve where you drop inside your pocket. You could, you know, drill this out right here and get rid of the metal altogether if you wanted to. Or you could use other leather sleeves if you want to use a different leather sleeve on it. I'm going to do a little video on some leather sleeves that I've bought in the spring and uh, this knife goes really well with one of those leather sleeves. So there you go. What do you think of the Rustic Gent? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. And remember, friends, cut towards your chum, not your thumb. <laughs>